Thank you, Adrian. Uh, I, I, and I thank the USISA organisers for putting cyber security on before JISC. <laughs> And, and interestingly, just, to, just as an aside on, 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 on some of the comments Simon made there, actually we did support from uh, government um, during and after the attack we had last year uh, to the extent of uh, giving us a fairly good idea of uh, cause and, 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 and the lone wolf, as it were. Um, uh, but, and actually, incidentally, uh, I, I had a very clear message out of the Cabinet Office that they believe that China have every single piece of intellectual property you may have anyway. So uh, there's a piece around, don't worry, they've done it. They've got it. You've got nothing left to protect. Uh, anyway, uh, on, to, uh, on, 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 to, on to mine. Um, so we, we know we live in quite interesting uh, troubled times. Four budgets in a year, uh, yet more uh, austerity, another year of austerity, if you believe uh, George Osborne's projections. Uh, and not many people uh, seem to. So that's going out uh, into the future. Um, and actually, troubled times are actually good for us as IT guys because they create a platform for change. It's the time to grab it, use it as a burning platform, be talking with your colleagues uh, and actually address the issue. I believe the presentation a couple ago, a year ago, HE isn't great at digitalization. Well, now's the time. It's the absolute right time to pick up that agenda and run with it. And the message I want you to, to leave you with it, through this presentation is, we're here to help you. That's what we're about. Now, you all know JISC, and what I'm hoping is that maybe you don't anymore. We are changing. The vision on the, for you, the uh, left-hand side, uh, is one that you should know. It's, we've, we've used it a lot. Uh, we really do want the UK to be the most digitally advanced education and research nation in the world. Uh, the piece that I've uh, brought in is this aim to achieve that vision is we really do are going to aspire to be this world-class powerhouse of digital support and transformation to you to help you make the UK that digitally advanced uh, education and research nation. I'm putting this slide up there because um, many of you will have seen this. One of the reasons I'm putting it up there is that's not changed. Whatever else we do, we are still that same fundamental organisation of the sectors, by the sectors, for the sectors. And the things that we do and the way that we operate isn't changing. Um, some things are, but we'll, we'll come on to some of that. But one of the things, that actually, when I, when I was rung up last year and said, would you like to apply for this role of Chief Exec of JISC? It's, well, well, what's JISC? Look at the website. Yeah, well, what's with JISC? <laughs> we, we, we haven't been great at actually describing, it's really hard to describe what JISC does. And actually, uh, my, my colleagues before me uh, came up with... Uh, with, with, with this sort of way that we're talking about what JIST does. We talk about, we do three things. When you boil it all down, just about everything we do fits into three headlines, which is providing shared infrastructure and services, whether it's the Janet Network or data centers, all the way through to Edgerone, Digimap, all the stuff that many of you, that you, that, that you use uh, day in, day out. And we are going to be adding to that in things like learner analytics, and research management that you, if you haven't already heard about it, you will by the end of your sizer, uh, for sure. Um, we also do deals for you, whether it's cloud services like our Microsoft Amazon deals, um, or whether it's just buying on behalf of the sector uh, for, for publications, saving millions of pounds every year on that. And then the last thing we do is advice and guidance. And again, many of you use that uh, on, on an ongoing basis. For example, um, when the uh, US safe harbor was, was, was knocked down, we were there uh, within 24 hours with advice to you on how to handle that. And that's the sort of thing that we do as well as in colleges uh, every day, helping them think about how to use IT in the right way. Um, and, and, and one of the reasons I'm putting this up, because this is primarily a, 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 an AT audience, is to remind you we're not just HE. We, we, we provide service way across the piece, whether it's colleges, uh, skills providers in the FE space, and actually uh, something we need to add to this slide is there's the, 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 there's, there's the 40 or 50 research institutes in the country that we connect. It's the British Museum, the British Library, the Science Museum. We are ubiquitous, and we intend to be ubiquitous and actually extending that ubiquity. So, for example, through our GISCOM subsidiary, which has been set up to exploit uh, the, 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 the Janet network and other capabilities, we've just entered into a contract with Goon Healy uh, to actually get even better 
comms in and out of uh, the country to, to, to back up uh, Géant for things like te television. Now, one of, one of the things that when I started, well, what does our products look like? How was our product structure, our architecture? Of course, every IT company has an architecture, doesn't it? Well, we didn't, so we're trying to form one. Um, so, and, and, and this is our first version, um, and, and there's a lot of work needed to it, but, but I thought I'd share it. Uh, and and everything, every, at the end of the day, everything rests on the Janet. That, the Janet. That, that is at the heart of, of, of what we do. We have, as part of, bring, of, of, of the merger, tried to downplay that a bit, not in terms of its importance, but to actually try and give equal to everything that we do. But at the end of the day, I don't have to worry about that legacy. Ja Janet is at the heart of everything we do. It is one of the massive values that we bring. Uh, uh, and and, 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 and uh, one of the things we want to do is to make sure that it stays there. Now, well, what you see here is that it actually, we, we, we're starting to shade this because Janet isn't one thing. Uh, there are multiple aspects of Janet. And as we go forward, particularly as you have a choice not to use us, I think it's important to make some of these distinctions. Um, and, and just remind you, actually, the key heart of Janet is the backbone. That is this massive thing that really does make the difference to us. But you don't all get to that backbone in the same way. There is no common way to get to that backbone. And, and to talk about Janet as a single thing uh, in that local access is where a lot, of, a lot of confusion comes in. And that's something over the next year, as you do have a choice, we need to be talking to you about because if you do decide to compare our price to others, it's important you compare the right thing and you are thinking about what, what, what it is that we're offering. Um, so that, that's where some of that is. Security, well, I don't need to say more about that. Um, that won't be enough. That, it, it's, uh, one, one of the problems with diagrams like this is they never quite work. Security is never going to be an odd thing. You, you have an optionality. You might, we might say, actually, you don't need to get the local access. You can come in other ways. I can tell you security is never going to be an option. Uh, it's always something that you, we, we add. Trust and identity, you know those products. I'll, I'll just dash through the rest of these in the interest of time and then just describe what it's all about. Um, so, so, on, so there's a range of technology services, you know, Edge Your Own, uh, Artelephony Preference Service, some of you use the data center, and there's a range of content services. Um, uh, and then on top of that, there are sort of value-added capabilities that we're building, uh, whether it's research management, <coughs> learner analytics, Blended, uh, blended learning. And then on top of that is more value-added services, more consulting services uh, in various types of ways. And then this big orange block uh, along the way, I would ask you to talk to Phil Richards about that because he can explain it way better than me. Uh, but this is how you can actually try, and, this, is, this is a way, more effective way of selling our content. So for example, in FE at the moment, there's a real need to get content out there for blended learning. And we're in the pro we, we've actually now got a beta version of something called the FE Online Academy, which is going to be a content store uh, in effect for, for, for FE. We've got, this, we've got the software working. It's just an empty shell at the moment. So we're now trying to source the content uh, for it. So we've got a store, uh, we've got a store with empty shelves uh, in effect, but that, that hopefully will uh, resolve itself soon. So anyway, where are we going? What is the future for, for, for JISC uh, in, in, in a short period of time? Um, to an extent, we're not sure. Um, again, when I came in, well, what are the visions for HE and research? We couldn't find them. So, 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 I, so, so we're putting them together. Uh, some of you will have seen this. Hopefully some of you contributed to them. We've, we're putting together four, four visions on teach, HEFE teaching research uh, library. Uh, we didn't have library, but, we talk, but, but Sconnell did persuade us we really should have a vision for library, so we've put it in. Uh, we, the, 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 the years are, to an extent, irrelevant. 2020 is shorter term enough. We can do something about it. 2030 is meant to be, you know, so far in the future, let's not worry about what's real or not. What, what is our aspiration uh, within that 2030 uh, time frame? And, and, and the point about this is to actually use them in our discussions with you about, well, what should we be doing together? Where are the areas that we should be uh, investing? These are what they look like. And again, I am not going to take you through them, partly because deliberately you can't read them. Uh, but also, I'm the last person to talk about uh, the future for learning and teaching in HE after only six months. Um, so that was the teaching one, that's the research one. Really happy to talk to you about these, but very happy to come along, show them to you and get your feedback because they're meant to be being grown uh, organically through your feedback and through experience. Uh, and, and we'll use them, as I say, to help define some of the things we should be doing in our co-design work when co-design 2016 comes along. 
But in terms of when we've taken that and our priorities, I mean, we, ha we are listening, and one of the things we've heard uh, you say to us is, actually, we want you to do fewer things, we want you to do them better, and we want you to be an awful lot more ambitious with them. You, in effect, you can do the mundane stuff. We, we, we're paying you to actually go beyond that, to do the stuff that we can't do. Um, so, so within that, these are the five areas that we've thought about when we're looking about digital transformation. Where can we make a difference based on what we're good at? Uh, and, and it's these five areas. Networking, advanced infrastructure, Janet's data centers obviously there. Technology-enabled learning, blended learning, distance learning, whatever that means. Uh, it's key. There's, there's, there's a lot needed in there, as you've probably heard earlier today. Library, to keep Sconnell on side. Um, open access and research management are, are, are critical. Uh, they're, they're where we've been and where we intend to be. And learner analytics is a space that we've uh, been, been really promoting. Uh, there is one that we're work, we think will be on there, but we haven't decided whether, whether we can actually do it well enough, and that's data analytics. So we may, uh, may well uh, add a sixth. Um, and that's just something we're, we're thinking about. Uh, do we know enough? Can we build that capability well enough to add value? Because there's no point if we can't uh, add, add value um, other than thought leadership. So what are we doing in some of these spaces? Now, here's, as, as, a networking, uh, as, as we do networking, I thought, you know, I'm not going to have a problem trying to do uh, video demonstrations off of the internet because one of the problems with innovation and what I'm showing you is my innovation stuff is, is that it's hard to demonstrate. So we've got YouTube clips of them. So I'm about to see whether this works. And it's actually going across my 4G dongle as the best... That's actually the best way to get it in this. It's holding the translucent layer, the grey layer, over oh, the desk. Presenting. Um, and you can see it might take maybe a few okay. seconds. I've got, it, I've got it on here. It's a latch on. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that we have to do is make one. sure that this is an extremely robust process. So as you can see there, it's accurate. Um, the various different... Okay, it's not going to work. I, I, never mind, it was a try. Let's go back to the presentation. We get, yeah, fine. It uh, doesn't matter. What, the, what we've done on augmented reality, and we can change it, we can show you a, a YouTube clip. Uh, it's basically for Leeds College of Music. Uh, one of their problems was people coming in learning mixing desks. It's really hard to learn a mixing desk. You've got, you've got manuals over here and a mixing desk over there. And it's perfect, it's wonderful for augmented reality. You get an iPad out, uh, it finds a mixing desk and it sort of identifies the different areas and you can uh, touch on it and it sort of gives you sort of this is what you do and then you can go into a bit further. It, actually, it was actually going to be quite, it was the, one of those self-referential things, you had a video within a video, it was, uh, it's going to be quite interesting in that thing. Um, but anyway, so that, that, that's what we're doing on, on that's, that's one of the things we're doing on technology enabled learning. It's not just blended learning, it's much, much more. And actually fascinating, I was at the, the you, you know the, the FE colleges in the UK, going through all these area reviews. I was at the area review board uh, that's looking at the whole program uh, last Thursday saying actually at the end of the, of, uh, once they've been done too, uh, a college really needs these 11 technology services. Strangely, some of them come from us. Um, but one of the pushbacks they gave to us is you're not being aspirational enough in the use of technology to change the learning experience. Because this is meant to be the absolute the minimum uh, that was needed. So, so there's a real hunger out there in lots of areas for actually using technology in very different ways, which is one of the reasons we've, we've done the augmented reality piece of innovation. Um, I was going to break up some talk with some videos. So you just, sorry, you're going to have to listen to me talk. Uh, on, 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 on the Janet piece, uh, we are investing in Janet. The, in effect, the summary is Janet is going to be uh, bigger, stronger, and uh, cheaper. Well, cheaper to us, you won't see that. Um, but... It's certainly going to be bigger and stronger as far as you're concerned. Um, I mean, in terms of the bigger, we've, 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 we've established the funds for the midterm upgrade. The midterm upgrade will be going ahead. Um, it was actually quite interesting. I met uh, an old board member from uh, DISC of a few years ago uh, last night. And he was saying to me, you know, when are you going to get 40 gigabytes uh, on, on, on the Janet back, though? And I said, well, we're just about upgrading to 400. Uh, gigabytes. So by the time we've done the midterm upgrade, uh, the, we'll, we'll be between 200 and 400 gigabytes a second uh, on, on, on the backbone. Uh, in terms of stronger, that is, comes back to DDoS. Any, any of you or your, your colleagues that took part in our workshops have heard some of our plans in terms of what we're going to do about DDoS protection. Uh, we signed off uh, a few million pounds, quite a few million pounds, to actually improve 
the resilience uh, of Janet to actually improve the way that we handle uh, DDoS attacks and other cyber security uh, attacks. Uh, any of you going to Network Shop or your colleagues going to Network Shop next week will probably get uh, some of the detail of that because, again, that's as far as I know. Actually, I know I do a bit more about that. And in terms of the future proofing, one of the challenges I gave to the team there was said, look, Janet, J Janet's great, it's been around forever, but it, uh, actually, if you had a blank sheet of paper, what would you do? Because there is quite a lot of cost and there's quite a lot of inefficiency uh, in, in, in the network just because of the way that it's grown over the years. Um, and they've come up with, uh, they're just about the end of coming up with uh, the blank sheet of paper version, which isn't that different, but there are some critical differences uh, in, 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 in the way that it's going to be architected uh, in future. And again, that's more one for a future presentation, but it's there. It's going to save us quite a bit of money in terms of the running uh, of Janet, probably improve the resilience and be more effective uh, as well. Um, Perhaps we know it will be more effective, uh, but, but again, that's one, that's one for another presentation, but rest assured, we have done that work and we are going to move uh, in, in that direction. And interesting, I think, again, it's worth just, on, just the one last thing on Janet. Don't expect to see a Super Janet 7. That's not the way we're intending to go, and, that, and it could be famous last words, but what we expect to be after the midterm upgrade is we're putting aside a certain amount every year and we will evolve uh, the network, so we're not going to throw away what we have and start again. It's very much... Uh, more of a, well, we're going to spend another 7 million this year and achieve this one, this, this, this improvement, and 7 million the year, a year and, and achieve that uh, type of improvement. So, so there's going to be just an ongoing investment in the network to, to make it what it needs to be and to keep it at the forefront uh, of, of, of capability. It is just about the best in the world and we intend it to stay there. I was going to give you a learner analytics uh, demo that I'm not even going to try clicking on. Um, uh, and, and again, very happy that, that it, it's a YouTube clip, very happy to show it to various people, and, and it shows the app. Uh, I think Phil may, may be showing some of that later on. Uh, for those of you that go there, if not, we can uh, make available. We're in pilot with five institutions. On the moment, I'll learn analytics with another 50 ready to come uh, pretty soon after that. And, and frankly, our ability, the 50 is just, our, just the money we've got. Uh, one of the things we're looking at is, can we find some more money to go faster because there is the demand uh, there. Unfortunately, funding isn't uh, in, 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 in that big a supply at the moment. Um, the data center side, uh, Southern Data Center, the one in Slough, you'll all know about that. It's, it, it's been a great success. Uh, there's, there's, there's now 16 institutions, a number of others uh, wanting to come, mix of HE, FE, research institutes. Uh, the Northern, appropriate, talking about the Northern Data Center, we've got our anchor tenants. We're in, co we're in contractual negotiations uh, now with uh, some of the, the, uh, the people who have uh, bid for that, and we certainly do intend to have that, uh, that, that operating uh, this year. Um, and then there's an open question about where next with the data centers, and Scotland and something in Wales West uh, uh, is, is just an obvious uh, place to add them to. Uh, I, I, the, I know there's been talk about one in Scotland, so we're seeing whether we can help with that in Wales is obviously just a, uh, uh, is, is there sufficient demand or will Slough uh, work for Wales is the question and we need to have those conversations. Um, the other demo I was going to do in terms of the innovation work was uh, data discovery. Um, so this is research management and just the ability to find research data. It's just the search tool that we've built. It's a great little, great little piece of uh, work. Um, for, those, for those institutions that are prepared to, that are part of this uh, uh, initiative, the ability to find the research data and go and look at it and go and look at what was the data that led to those findings uh, in that research paper. Um, there was a good piece about archaeology, which uh, I thought was a, uh, a, a, a good link into uh, data discovery, but uh, unfortunately I can't show it to you. But, uh, so we'll move on, probably just as well in terms of time. Um, and then th th that's, there's a level of aspiration in that, but in terms of overcoming our, our challenges, we've, we've got challenges. It's not going to be simple. I'm laying out a picture of where I want to be, um, and, and it's not going to come uh, without quite a lot of hard work. And our key challenges are money and actually the culture within JISC. If I talk about money, uh, I don't need to tell you that funding in the UK is very definitely under pressure. We've had some good news recently that uh, certainly for the next year and probably the year after our funding is in an okay place. It's going down. Uh, things are tighter. Uh, but, 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 but for the next two years, it's not, it's not tragic. Um, and we hope to give you some good news as institutions later in the year uh, as a result of that. We do know that in further education, it's crashing 
after that. The biz cuts are really going to hit uh, further education uh, and, and, and we've got to look at how we, we handle that. And actually, I don't know what the position, I actually don't, hefty don't know what the position is really. After that, they don't even know they're going to be around in two or three years' time. So <laughs> now you can ask that one of David Sweeney when he appears after lunch. But, um, but, but as a result, we can't sit around and wait for, for that to happen. So we're, we're taking control of our own destiny. I've given the organisation a 10% a year profit improvement target. We believe that should be enough to see us through most of the uh, potential worst scenarios. And, and, uh, and actually, if those worst scenarios don't play out, uh, there's an upside to that. Um, that we we'll talk about profit improvement because actually, if all we ever do is cut, then actually we start getting to the point of cutting bone. Uh, and, and what we want to do is be lean and fit. So if we can generate more income, uh, that's a much better place to be uh, than, than cutting. Um, and so, so, so we will be offering you more opportunities to give us money for some great uh, services. Uh, and before you say, but surely that's part of the subscription, because uh, I, <laughs> I can hear it coming from Chris right now. <laughs> you actually pay us more now in optional services than you do in subscription as HE. So we get almost twice in optional services that we do in your subscriptions today. Um, so we just want to add to that piece of optionality. Uh, and that means thinking about what more we can do that you want to pay for. Um, we are going to have to shut down some things. We've already announced that Joram and JDM uh, are shutting down uh, soon because there was just was not the use to, worth, to be worth the cost. And there's a few other services that are in that sort of space. We're doing a review of those. Most of them are in the content space, um, but, there are, but, but, but there are a couple we're reviewing on the technology space. Uh, and, and, and frankly, if there isn't the use to justify the, the cost, we will shut them down. We will consult, we'll talk to you, uh, and make sure that we're not sort of falling over our feet by doing that. But, but we have to take those sort of hard decisions. And then, and then there will be some services that we will be redesigning. So a lot of our library services, we're thinking about redesigning them to make them lower cost and hopefully more effective. And I talked about Janet. It is a key part of our, our profit improvement is to redesign Janet for lower cost uh, and, and, and greater efficiency. Um, actually, I'll skip through that side. Uh, and in terms of the culture, um, one of the advantages I have coming in new is I can ignore the various different cultures that came in from the various organisations that merged to form GISC and actually sort of say, well, actually, I want you to take my culture. Uh, and this is sort of uh, the, the sort of culture that I've brought, which are those sort of five, uh, five values. Uh, and actually, I'm hoping that you will actually see a change, not just in the way that GISC operates, but the way that we talk and deal with you. Uh, that we do, I mean, the, the amount of people that told me you're not moving fast enough, and it's true, uh, so pace is critical, the right type of pace, and doing it with passion. We don't want to, be, we don't want to be sort of come, come around and sort of plod around. We really want to come out here with fire and passion in our belly, make real changes, and build trust with you, and do it with you. And I'm hoping that already uh, those of you who have been working with have seen us to be much more open uh, and transparent. We did have a, a habit of uh, putting our arms around something, being really difficult to collaborate, creating issues in terms of collaboration and actually not telling you stuff. There is no reason why you shouldn't know, including what our costs are. Uh, and, and I'm already trying to sort of uh, break those barriers and become much more open, transparent, much more of a team in that respect. Uh, and then the other piece is one of actually thinking about people. We did get into quite a corporate uh, uh, and, and what, what, what way of talking about what we do and, and, and the way we would actually sort of demonstrate uh, our value. And, 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 and that, for me, is not what this is about. This is about uh, being together with people, using technology to change the way that we as people uh, do things. Um, and those of you at the Digi Fest, I apologize for, because um, I'm about to show you a video that uh, some of you would have seen before. But, but my last piece is, I really hope, do hope that JISC uh, will stun you in future years. And let's start off, hopefully, with the, the video. If you can play that from there, that'd be great. It's way better than I imagined. It is actually really hard to describe. And being able to look at that amazing view of planet Earth is it's way beyond my expectations. Does my heart beat faster in space? Actually, it's the opposite. My heart beats a little bit slower up here in space.
to get my money's worth from that video. <laughs> so, so, as I say, um, hopefully you can see there just a different tone in the way that we're, we're talking to you. But anyway, let me return to our, to our aim that I talked about at the beginning, our DNA, uh, which is to be this digital powerhouse. They are simple words, but, but what does this mean and what is our aspiration? For me, it means clear thought leadership in our focus areas. We've already made a great start in learner analytics and research management, but it is a start. Uh, I know there's so much more to do in this space, and we will uh, do it. We aim to develop and deliver innovative and effective solutions to, to you, the sector, playing our part in helping you to become truly world class will bring a relentless focus uh, on what we can do to make that happen, what we can bring to help you to deliver innovation to your users. I want Jess to be a catalyst for your own innovations, to be a stimulus, pushing you forward on your journey to being regarded as being the best, amongst the best in the sector. I want Jess to be your invaluable partner, working with you to provide solutions uh, that work and deliver value, uh, solutions that will engage and excite your learners. I want just to deliver new ways of learning, new research methods, new ways of making that all-important data accessible and available where you want it and when you want it. I want just to deliver that extra edge that will drive you on to success on a national and international stage. And I'll ensure that we will do it, and we'll do it in the most efficient way that we can. We've developed and we operate shared services and world-respected infrastructure that you use and you depend on every day. We know you do that. We do this so that you can share capabilities, and we do this so that we can add, add much unmatched value to your institutions. And I just want to leave you with one more thought. And the reason why we do this, and, 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 and why we believe it, is important. Very simply, we believe in our vision. We can make the UK the most digitally advanced education and research nation in the world. We've got the institutions, we've got the people, We've got the skills, and I believe this room has the determination to do it. And JISC stands here right beside you, determined to be the digital powerhouse that drives you on. Thank you.